The Saco River rises in a small pond in Crawford Notch, New Hampshire, and it ends about 130 miles later at the Atlantic Ocean. Today, you're going to experience life along the river in a rather interesting way. It's kind of a beautiful morning here in Bartlett, New Hampshire, right beside Route 302 uh, on a tributary of the Saco River. A group of uh, paddle boarders are going to kind of water walk down the river here for the next six days to the ocean, and we're here to send them off in good style. Now, among the, the members of this flotilla are a good friend and local photographer, Joe Clementovich. Joe, Good to see the you usual again. pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> now, whatever possessed you to do a crazy thing like this? Ah, uh, boy, I think it was probably a year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, I started thinking about it, probably longer than that, but there's an organization called Rivers for Change, and they had uh, a request for grants, and they I sent in an application, and they want to tell stories around rivers, yeah. and, um, and particularly any kind of adventure that goes from source to sea. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so that got me thinking more serious about it. Uh, I sent in an application, and a few months ago, they said, yeah, here's, here's uh, a little bit of support money. Isn't and nice? uh, huh. And then it's kind of funny because um, Mike, who I'm paddling with, was kind of on the same track. He's always yeah. want he paddles a lot, and he's always wanted to um, paddle the Saco to the ocean, and uh, <laughs> so we kind of joined Mike, forces. Mike, yeah. so yeah. you you share this this idiotic streak, right? I do, I do. Yeah, you know. Uh, I don't know. It just seemed like a, it seemed like a natural objective. I um, I, I grew up paddling and uh, moved to New Hampshire in the Mount Washington Valley in 2017, and yeah. when I arrived. Just started taking stock of the recreation opportunities here, and the Saco just seemed like an obvious um, thing to, to paddle. And so my wife actually got me into stand-up paddleboarding, uh -huh. um, and um, it was when I discovered how fun they are and how capable they are on on rivers. <laughs> you that, sound like Adam. Eve made me do it. Oh, no, 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 no! I give her credit. There's no, there's no blame. Um, it is a nice way to explore. Yeah, you're, it, huh? you're higher up. You're not sitting all the time, you can yeah. be more active, um, uh, and they can go through yeah. inches of water. That's great. Now, what do you hope to see along the river? Anything special? Oh, it's, it's, what's interesting about the Saco is it's a, one of the cleanest waters, one of ah. the cleanest rivers in New England. Um, and, you know, living in the Mount Washington Valley, we're in the mountains all the time. And yeah. I think for me, the connection between the mountains and the ocean is pretty special. Yeah. So we'll travel, like this morning, we decided to move downriver because yeah. of the low water. Um, but we were gonna start up higher in Bartlett and um, you can see the water's pretty low. So it is. Yeah. we'll travel through you know, these kind of rivers and then we'll get into agricultural land and meandering rivers we'll, and then eventually end up in the estuary that leads into the Atlantic. And we should, we should see you in a few days. You're going to let us know when you're yeah, near yeah. the mouth, and we'll try to join you again, eh? Sounds good. The Saco River flows southeast from Crawford Notch, New Hampshire. It snakes its way through Conway and then across the border into Maine, flowing eventually into the Atlantic Ocean at Saco Bay. 136 miles from its source. Joe and Mike set off on their trip from Bartlett, New Hampshire. Within a couple of hours, they round a bend into Conway, where during the summer, the river attracts crowds of people. They come here to ride the rapids on inner tubes. A drought this year has changed that. Well, we saw a couple um, around Conway area yeah. and a handful of folks along the shore as we paddled through, but it relatively quiet. A 
uh, the last time <laughs> I saw you two, you were uh, embarking down a remarkably shallow <laughs> river <laughs> yeah. full of rocks. And I thought, those poor guys are going to be walking on in 30 miles. Uh, but apparently that wasn't the case, right? Just the first 30. <laughs> yeah, felt like the first 30, for sure. Yeah. I think we spent a mile in the Ellis, and yeah. that was bumping against rocks and carrying uh, for... You, were you walking and towing the... the yeah, because yeah, all our stuff was on the boards. But it was off and on and not too bad. And then we got into the Saco proper through North or through Glen, Bartlett. Um, yeah. And North Conway, but you know, last year was a drought, this year was a drought, or you know, we haven't had much rain. Well, we just crossed into Maine. Uh, I don't know how many miles we're at, like maybe 20 something, but we're in Freiburg, Maine. There's one little dam. Um, in Freiburg, we had the portage around, and then we had like a few miles after that, so definitely a long day. Almost to the first dam. What lies ahead on the river for Joel and Mike is a lot of history. Wabanaki people lived along the Saco for more than 10,000 years. Looking good, Nelson. They grew food on its shores. They fished and used the river as a travel route. In the 1800s, industrial development began in earnest. Textile manufacturers and lumbering businesses set up shop along the banks. The river was harnessed and put to work. I think one of the quotes that I stumbled upon at some point was, when all of these towns and cities were developed, they built with their backs to the river, and basically right. the river was, you know, that was their dump, and it just went away. And yep. now, you know, that's starting to change as we, you know, oh, went yeah. through Biddeford. There's, it's, it's more vibrant than it has been, and, yep. and partly because the river's like something to cherish and respect, as opposed oh, yeah. to just dump your trash in. So. Well, I think that's what Dalen from the Saco River Corridor Commission imparted to us when we yeah. spoke with her is the Saco is a success story, right? I mean, yeah. it was, you know, more polluted um, decades yeah. ago. If everybody could see the river walks in San Antonio and uh, Saranac Lake, yep. Yep. they'd all want one. It is beautiful. Yeah. You know? It's and that's just, happening. Yeah. It's fun to see, you know, the mill buildings being renovated and, and focusing on, you know, restaurants facing the river and enjoying that. Yep. that and there's a river walk here. I think we portaged by one where we put in. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's on the up. Yep. Try and stay optimistic, right? The alternative is not fun. All right. That's right. I think we're lucky to have this running through our backyards and front yards oh, yeah. and that it's not a mess like it could be. Yeah. yeah. There are other rivers up here you could do, aren't there? You could do the Merrimack. Take I did John a couple days on the Merrimack and it's it's kind of a mess, you know? It is, yes. A lot of cities, a lot of um, effluent and just kind of like ah, the effluent. discharge and whatever else is going run, you know? Did this one stay clean as you came down? Right until we're right to Biddeford, yeah. 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 It was noticeable. I mean, having traveled the extent of it and really seeing the clarity and the, feeling the cool water, yeah, hitting kind of the, the bottom of the river, certainly noticed, you know, the, the various drain pipes and the change in the turbidity and the temperature and all the industrial buildup around the shoreline. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, relatively speaking, you know, the, the corridor itself is remarkably managed. Um, I'm really thankful that I think in the 1970s they established the, the regulation that managed mm -hmm. you know shoreline development along the Saco, yep. um, and that plays you know, significantly into the quality of, quality of the water, the quality of the experience we had. Um, it was yeah, it was pretty incredible. 
With time, many of the industrial centers faded away and recreation grew. Canoes, kayaks, and rafts replaced log booms. People from near and far come to the Saco to play and fish. Yeah, we used to fish it down around Conway. Oh, yeah. They stay in the guest house there by the bridge, and the tubers just drove us nuts. <laughs> you know, they'd float by with a, well, you're trying to cast to a rising fish and yeah. say, hey, would you like one? Want a cold one? I was like, I'd want if I had a chance. <laughs> it was surprising how probably the first three days we saw six or eight people total. Is that right? Really, it was remarkable. Really wild um, shoreline. And, you know, we've talked a little bit about, uh, before the trip, we talked to um, some folks at the, was it the Saco River Corridor Commission? Yep. And that's part of Maine, and they regulate um, the shoreline. And it's remarkable. I thought for sure, I think both of us expected once we got through kind of south of Freiburg into Hiram and you heading know. down into kind of deeper into Maine that there'd be lots of houses and backyards, but we'd go for hours through more or less wilderness. I mean, it was oh. Oh. Yeah, pretty good. If you're wondering, as I am, how Joe and Mike keep themselves fed throughout the day and warm at night, look no farther than beyond their boards. So it's uh, mostly like camp stuff, my, 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 my food, um, sleeping. Uh, we have a pump in here, repair stuff, first aid kit, all the typical stuff you need for just, you know, an overnight. Um, and then on the bow is kind of where I'm keeping snacks and stuff I anticipate wanting to grab during the course of the day. And you know, I think I weighed out roughly camera gear and tent and, or sleeping bags and all food and all that stuff. And I was like 45 to 50 pounds. And, oh, and they travel great. It's really, they're fun in the rapids. They're, they paddle great in the flat water. We're going to a campground at the end of the day, meeting Mike's wife. And she's bringing Fancy food and beer, maybe. Oh, I just met up with everybody yesterday. We met at Skeleton Dam. We paddled down to the campsite last night. Have you paddled the Saco? Uh, more the upper section, so never down down this part. Oh, it was really nice. What we paddled yesterday was so peaceful. It was beautiful. Yeah. The life of the river slows down our paddle boarders. They take time to enjoy everything around them. That's why they're here. Did you camp pretty much anywhere you liked? It was a mix of. We were, yeah, I mean, there was, there was a handful, I mean, a fair bit of private property posting, but we found yeah. one evening, we did find some, uh, a beach that uh, wasn't posted, uh, and um, uh, we were able to uh, take advantage of, of that spot. Um, and then we've stayed in a couple campgrounds. You want to tell us about the plan? So, we're a few miles above High Room. And we're hoping to get somewhere below Limington Rips um, by the end of the day tomorrow. So we've done, we did 31 miles yesterday, 26, 27 today. So we gotta be able to knock out something around that tomorrow. Set ourselves up so we have about 20 miles maybe left to get to the ocean on Sunday. Wow, that's yeah. kind of close when yeah. you start thinking that way. Yeah. Back in the saddle, maybe the last full day. Mike packing up at Limington, Limington Rip. Now we're into kind of still water for the next, well, from here till the day finishes up.
The crew and I had planned to meet Joe and Mike at Biddeford, Maine. How are you? Okay. You guys don't look like you've been paddling for four days. You're too clean. <laughs> we're, uh, we're energized by it all. Yeah. They arrive on day four of their trip, one day early. We're still trying to put all the days together. It's yeah, you screwed, up, <laughs> yeah. you screwed up my whole schedule. Oh, I had all figured out when you were going to finish, and all of a sudden. How's it been going? Great, yeah. Um, last four days have been amazing. So, how far have you been traveling? Up to this point. What's the mileage? Uh, we did six this morning to get here. We camped up at a nice family campground up the river. And, uh, well, I guess it's what, 130 minus six more miles. So we're at mile marker approximately 129.4 on this map. We started from mile marker 22.5. So we're like, we're like 104 miles. Yeah. We lucked out with, I think there was rain in the mountains on one night, and then that next day there was a bump in the water, so the river was really flowing along nice. So that's when um, we were like, wow, we're really going to finish early. All right, so we're um, Sheep Falls. We're, we're, at, we're below Sheep Falls. On the Today was a reasonably short day, but the day before was, was that four portages or three? Four. And yeah. Uh, so that's like a lot of. Yeah. Flat water, a lot of unloading, carrying the paddle boards around dams and rapids yeah. and... But really that's where the paddle boards shine, is their light, so the portages yeah. were not too bad. I mean, you know, there's the unloading and the kind of rigmarole that goes along Do with that. Do they fit under your arm? Under your arm and you can carry them easily. Uh, so, you know, I had a dry bag, backpack, and I was yeah. able to do, you know, one trip. Yeah. Um, and Joe as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it made it pretty slick. Big dam. A dam right in the heart of Biddeford forces the paddle boarders out of the water and onto the streets. Why? Why do we do what we do? Yeah, you want to go left, bro. Three across. This is so much fun. It's bizarre. I love it's it. It's so funny. Every single person that stopped at the stop sign says, hey, where you going? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Where are you going? I love it. I love it. Sushi bar just ahead. I know, I wish it's nine o'clock though. We gotta catch the outgoing tide. After their hike through town, Joe and Mike meet me on the other side of the dam. I have a canoe waiting in the water and I'll paddle the last six miles with them to the ocean. Yeah, great shot to the ocean. Six miles to Camp Ellis, which I guess would be the proper Atlantic Ocean. Well, I suppose uh, if we're going to get down there, we're going to have to start sometime, right? Yep, six more miles to Camp Ellis from here. So we've been traveling about three miles an hour, but the outgoing tide should give us a little boost. So about an hour and a half, probably something like that. Yeah, we're guessing, yeah. Plus, we have a little tailwind yeah, too. Yeah, that's great. It's going to be easy living from here yes. out. Yes, <laughs> I prayed for this last night. <laughs> <laughs> God, this is fun. <laughs> nice, hot, sunny day. With very little wind. At least it's not in my face. <laughs> Only about five miles to go. We should make it. And if you could uh, turn around and let me straighten up the canoe, that'll be okay with me. <laughs> Thank you. I watched Joe and Mike paddle and I'm intrigued, but 
I'm not quite ready to trade in my canoe for a paddleboard. Oh, man. Oh, well. I'll never be young again, but it must have been fun. <laughs> well, you know, you could sit on it, you could kneel on no, it, you know, no, maybe next St. John's, maybe we'll get you up there. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> it was fun to go into this whole thing with just like very little planning, yeah. very little, yeah. you know, a few expectations, but I think overall we just kind of winged it. Thankfully, yeah. Amanda, uh, Mike's wife, was a huge help with, you know, she helped us get a campground on one night. Nelson's coming in on. Friends in the community also were uh, super uh, into this whole trip. We had several folks show up. Our friend Eric Nelson paddled, uh, paddled with us for a day oh, and really? a half. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, and a um, few folks uh, brought some, uh, some food along our first night in Freiburg. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was, it was great. And I think it's been surprising for both of us to see how many people will, are messaging like, oh, you yeah, know, it's great you're doing that. I've always thought about doing that. And then, um, so maybe, yeah. But even strangers, right? Yeah. Portage in through Bitterford yeah. and Saka. We had, yeah. uh, in the, we, uh. we had a one mile walk along through, on pavement to get around the Cataract Dam complex. Yeah. Yeah. Look at us doing the long way around. Hey, you... Using the crosswalk. And so we're walking through crosswalks and sidewalks. Right. <laughs> and people were rolling down their windows, asking where we'd come from, where yeah. we were going, random beeps and hot, like thumbs up. It, was really, yeah. it was really fun. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The finish line is in sight. It's a good time to ask my river companions to reflect on their journey. I think we started off talking when we left. We had grand plans of like, I don't know what, but the idea of like the connection between the mountains and the ocean and these waterways and the significance of them. I know that the old timers always thought of the river as a way to get down to the ocean. Yep. And the sailors thought of the river as a way to get up into the hinterlands. You know, yeah. it was a whole different, you know, point of view to the rivers. Yeah, I think a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of, we did a fair bit of research on the, um, the Abenaki, the Wabanaki in this whole New Hampshire, Maine area. And it was interesting to just be on the water and be paddling through that. And really, there were stretches where it, it felt like there was you know, no civilization on either side. And um, that kind of connection between whether it's nature or history or, um, you know, the native peoples, just to see that, we certainly felt like we were back, a, you know, a few hundred years. We're fortunate to be in a place where we have these urban centers like Portland and, you know, the coast of Maine is well populated, but yet only an hour and a half away, you can jump in a river and have a five day experience, right? I mean, yeah. all these all these people could jump in their car and less than two hours be in a pretty remarkable river in the mountains and then you know, spend a, a, a long weekend or a handful of days well, on the river. And I think it's important to remember that we are all connected by this body of water, right? So we're sitting here and the water we're seeing flow by started yeah. uh, in Crawford Notch. That's right. Yep. And so what we do upstream affects what happens downstream. And um, it's really interesting to think that um, we kind of were just, you know, we floated through that whole corridor. Mike and Joe are mighty voyageurs that completed their perilous descent of the thundering Sacco. And you're here at Tidewater now. Yeah, Camp Ellis. Home. Yeah, ready to yep. go home and have a little rest, right? Yeah, ready to 
Drive the hour, what, hour and a half hour home, and a half, right? Yeah. Oh, I got three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great that you did it, and I hope you do another one, and we'd like to be invited on that one too. Don't yeah, you yeah. think? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks for coming out. Oh, my pleasure. You know <laughs> that. So I'll say goodbye to you guys now. I have to say goodbye to these people here too. Uh, I'm Willem Lang, and I hope to see you all again on Windows to the Wild. Bye bye. Support for the production of Windows to the Wild is provided by the Alice J. Rain Charitable Trust, the Fuller Foundation, the Gilbert Verney Foundation, Bailey Charitable Foundation, the McIninch Foundation, and viewers like you. Thank you.